Hello everyone, I am Dr. Parul Malhotra, Associate Professor, Jagannath University, Jaipur. In today's video, we will learn about writing for online media. In Unit 4, also we had learned that and we will be continuing with that topic only, that is writing for online media. Uh, we will begin with do's and don'ts for reporting and editing for newspapers, websites and news portal. Online writing refers to any text that is created with and usually intended for viewing on a computer, smartphone or similar digital device. This is also called as digital writing. What are the basis of the digital writing? The good news about writing for the web is that there isn't a magic secret that will help you write well for the web. If you can write well, then web writing is something that you should pick up easily. In fact, many aspects of web writing will be familiar to an old-fashioned newspaper sub-editor. A sub-editor or a sub is the person who works in a newspaper or magazine, making sure that all the copy for correspondents, freelancers and columnists fits the spaces left in the publication. A good sub-editor can condense longer features without missing out important details, write good headlines and then it can turn long rambling sentences into short concise ones. All these skills are important in writing for the web. Other aspects of writing for the web is making sure your readers remain interested from the first paragraph and that you think carefully about your target audiences are good practicing in all writing. Then start well. Perhaps as a text alert or in a different part of your website or even the first sentence should be interesting or the reader won't go to the bottom to read it. Sometimes this is called front loading your copy. Remember that the first paragraph may appear in a number of places, that is another websites. If this is the case, make sure that the first paragraph makes sense when you read in isolation. For news in briefs, reports, short news, features, you will usually want to include as much as of what, why, when, who, where as possible in your first paragraph. These are called the five W's of writing of writing a new story. You are telling people exactly what the story is going to be about and leaving them to decide whether the user wants to find out more about the story. One is likely to have extremely limited space for the first paragraph of the story. One should have a look at few news pages and count how many words are in the opening paragraph and decide which intros draws the user into the story. Just look at these following website for some exciting intros. That is www.newsbbc.co.uk Then the website of CNN, Al Jazeera, News Google, then Irish News, Africa Daily and the Lanka pages. These are certain pages where you can just browse and just see how the intros are being written. If the intro is interesting, only then the reader will read it further. Next we have non-news intros. For other kinds of writing, concentrate on making the story interesting. It is a common myth that all the types of stories have to start with what, why, when and who. A behind the news feature picks out the most interesting fact or quote. For example, a lifestyle feature may draw the reader into the piece with an interesting quote that is explained more fully further into the story. For example, a government report on tax may have been released that is full of information relevant to your readership. If you start with the killer facts, they will continue to read on. If your intro starts with who published the report and when it was released, the, lead, the reader might not be interested enough to read on. Why should your reader care that government has issued a report? They do that all the time. 
but if the report is about tax breaks that will make that will make the reader richer start with this info by all means include the what why when who information but not always in the first paragraph if you are asked to write a review you do not have to go straight into plot details of the movie show or book start with an observation link its release to a topical event or an interesting thread that you pick up later in the story an unusual question or juxtaposition might be enough to get the interest of the reader you have to work even harder on the web to maintain interest because your rivals are only a click away headlines headlines like intros are designed to draw the reader to your feature although you have to think carefully of your audience when you write for them you will need to think about where your headline will end up on some sites web headlines may appear as a tax alert text alert digital television caption or another part of your website if this is the case you will have to explain a lot in a very few words or end up confusing your users on other websites the headline only appears on one page and you can become more creative with your headline you will have to find a balance between making your header interesting enough to draw the reader in rather than confusing your audience if you know your users are quite old then you could exclude them with pop cultural references that the mtv generation would enjoy and vice versa ideally wait till you have completed your feature and found an image before you write your headline a really good headline often works because of the juxtaposition of words and images writing headline is definitely a skill that needs practice it's easier to tell a story in 500 words than 5 words keep it short people usually have very little time to read on the web and it hurts their eyes when they do help them out by keeping your writing short and avoiding unnecessary phrases according to jacob nielsen us web experts it's 25% harder to read online than on a page whilst it's probably impossible to measure exactly how much more difficult it is for people to read from the screen it is certainly harder than reading from paper so you really need to think carefully about your word count it has to be very interesting very catchy and very involving only then your readers are going to read it you might want to restrict the number of words in a particular story within your cms content management system for example in the bbc's news online cms certain elements of the story such as the paragraph that introduces the news item can only be a certain number of words long writing for the web is a specific skill it is more like writing copy for adverts brochures or exhibition than books or articles according to nielsen sub web writing experts suggest that you have the word count of regular writing this naturally depends on the length of your offline writing it is very important to keep your paragraphs short normally restricting yourself to one paragraph per idea a web paragraph is usually no more than one to two sentences often separated by a line break that is a line of space then keep it simple think about words and phrases that do not add anything promotional language imposes a cognitive burdens according to jacob nielsen in other words it is easier to read simple language cliche is bad too don't use tired idioms for even trendy news ones 
every language has phrases and expression lazily used in the media which tend to irritate users in english for example bad writers tend to use adverbs like basically and literally it hardly adds anything to your story avoid using such words if you irritate people they click off and even if they stick with you it makes whatever you write harder to read so people retain less management speak is also to be avoided it suggests that you haven't thought about what you are saying and that you are copying someone else thoughts or ideas a story based on a press release from an organization should never be recognized as such rewrite external material unit it has the voice of your organization remember the people who work in pr and politics sometimes invent words and phrases to deliberately confuse readers if you repeat their words and phrases without questions they have one next is finding a voice it is vital that you connect with your audience good writing is about context not strict rules an old fashioned expression for this is get into bed with your reader this means find out as much as possible about your readership successful magazine and newspaper publishers spend millions of pound doing this if you can find out about your readers whims irritations and interests your writing can be much sharper for example if you know the average age range of your users you can tailor your cultural references towards them there is no point in writing about music or political events that your audience is too young to remember put simply find out what your users like and write about it if you cannot carry out market research find out what people are saying on chat rooms or in their emails to your site although beware the views of people who spend hours in a chat room or emailing organization may not be the views of the general readers this you have to judge right then style on the web avoid underlining because people expect a hyperlink avoid excessive capitals this is shouting on web and bold is easier to read on screen than italics if you want to highlight anything you can simply put it in the bolds there is no need to put in the capitals keep your grammar simple and your sentence short exclamation marks rarely work particularly multiples it is important that you have a style sheet also called a style guide for your website to provide editorial consistency and guidance in areas of language where there are different ways of expressing the same information for example in english you can write 11th september 2001 11th september 2001 91101 or 1191 and so on one is not more correct than other but they need to be same throughout your site style sheets might also include a list of bland clichés bland clichés and phrases to create consistency you need to make sure that everybody on the site is aware of the style sheet Style sheets for your website may be similar to those of the radio station, TV channels or newspaper that your site represents. Although in most cases a web story will be shorter than a print story always. Links. Do not fill your body copy with lots of links. You could send people out of your piece and you will certainly make it hard for people to read. Collect links at the end. or elsewhere on the page but do use links this helps your site become a trusted guide to the web resources to make it easy for the user you should deep link this mean sending user to the exact page 
rather than forcing them to navigate from a site's home page to find the right article. Include relevant links. Make sure that links are not going to change. For example, don't link to the BBC News online home page. Link to the story. Make sure that you deep link to the most important part of the website. Make it easy for the readers. Deep linking means sending users to the exact features. For example, it is better to link to the exact story. That is guardian.co.uk, guardian education story, whatever the link is the story, rather than the site where it appears just guardian. This is just an example. That is you put the link of the story, not of the website, right? Make your story as interactive as possible. If possible, give users an address. Never your own personal email address to get them involved in the site. If you can use readers response in some way, that's excellent. People will feel part of a community and keep visiting your site. But be realistic. But be realistic. A 2003 new vision text SMS poll came up with results from only 42 people. New Vision is a Kampala newspaper. Uganda is a country where very few people have a mobile phone. So its results are unlikely to reflect the views of the population. Remember, you cannot impose communities and people. You can only tap into existing communities. If you are creating a message board, then you should find out what people are already talking about rather than imposing on people. Under UK law, you are seen as the publisher of all content on your site even if that content is a message board on chat room with disclaimer explaining that views expressed on the boards are not those of your organization. Therefore, UK websites have to be seen to take reasonable care in making sure that no material breaks UK media laws, libel, component of court, decency laws, etc. Find out about the relevant laws in your own country. You might want to set up a system where somebody looks at the message before they appear on the site, pre-moderating your message board to avoid these problems. The BBC's Have Your Say facility is a good example of a pre-moderated message board that has become an important part of the site. Next is images. As with the magazine or newspaper, you should imagine how the text, images and page layout will work together. Especially on a home page where you are encouraging people to click through to the actual story. Ideally, get the image early as it will affect your copy. A strong image can draw a reader into a story, although remember that you are limited by the size of your picture. A crowd scene might look great on a larger format newspaper image, but it will not work on the web where smaller images are more effective. You might have to source images yourself, so find out which kind of images work best. It is also important to learn about what makes good web design and don't be afraid of working closely with designers. A well-designed web page is simply without too many images and images small enough in both file size and actual size to load up straight away. Remember to include a descriptive alt tag, the text that appears when you point at an image. Now let us look some tips for web writing. Write relevant content. It may be tempting to write about your brother's dog. But if it does not relate to site or your page topic, leave it out. Web readers want information and unless the page is information about said dog, they really won't care. Even if it is a good metaphor for what you are trying to say. Put conclusions at the beginning. 
think of an inverted pyramid when you write get to the point in the first paragraph then expand upon it write only one idea per paragraph web pages need to be concise and to the point people don't read web pages they scan them so having short meaty paragraphs is better than long rambling ones use action words tell your readers what to do avoid the passive voice keep the flow of your pages moving next take care of the format use lists instead of paragraphs lists are easier to scan than paragraphs put things in point it is easier to read in points especially if you keep them short let limit list items to seven words studies have shown that people can only reliably remember seven to 10 things at a time by keeping your list items short it helps you readers remember them write short sentences sentences should be as concise as you can make them use only the words you need to get the essential information across include internal subheadings subheadings make the text more scannable your readers will move to the section of the document that is more useful for them and internal cues make it easier for them to do this make your links part of the copy links are another way readers scan pages they stand out for normal text and provide more cues as to what the page is all about proofread your work typos and spelling errors will send people away from your pages make sure you proofread everything you post to the web in a big organization there is should be sign off procedure to ensure that all work that goes live has been subbed that is sub edited if there is not create one at small websites people often don't bother getting someone to sub new copy it shows you can you can't sub your own words so get someone to check before you publish just because it's easy to publish to the web without subbing do not do it if your cms publishes live to the web immediately get somebody to look at your writing in another program example word before going live and checking the pages again on the site alternatively your pages can be subbed in the development area of your site before publishing live although be aware that most people sub edit better from a print out than on screen this i have myself practiced then whenever i need to edit any kind of document i prefer doing it uh, on a print out than on a screen it looks better and it also gives you uh, you can say uh, an idea that how it will actually look uh, to the readers so it's a better to do it on the print out don't get precious about someone changing your work a good sub will be improving your work in your ways you can't see because you have been looking at it too long if you have to explain what you meant to somebody looking at your story then you probably need to rewrite it don't feel bad about changing someone's copy if you are sure you are making it better and remember even the best writers in the world have ticks phrases they return to again and again by mistake cutting edge literary historians use these to authenticate manuscripts said to be produced by famous authors and detectives have been known to catch murderers from noticing the distinctive writing patterns of murderers a good sub will also make sure that your copy is legally safe this is a good thing because it can save your website million of pounds in legal fees court costs and fines take a screen break just because you are writing for the web this does not mean you should get all your information from it the web is a useful resource for a web writer certain sites are particularly good for names dates background information and legislation sites uh, like imdb internet movie database have made search research into movies for example much easier 
However, web researcher only goes so far. You still need to talk to real people and ask them your questions in addition to taking in what's already on the web. Remember always that you, if you have found it easily on Google, then everyone else did too. Question every online resource thoroughly. Just because something is on the web, it does not mean it is true. Lots of people writing on the web will not have your standards of integrity and will present information in a biased way. Even official sites for major organizations can be full of inaccuracy or out of date. People do not always delete obsolete pages and these can still appear as search results. And always get your own quote, either by phoning an organization or in person. Your ability as a writer to explain complex matters in simple language is perhaps the most asset to your website. If you are writing about unfamiliar topics, ask an expert or knowledgeable colleague to explain something you do not understand rather than rewrite something from the web that you do not know. Now let us look for editing for the basics. The person responsible for the site's editorial content has enormous responsibility. They decide what the stories users see. The presentation of those stories carriers with its reputation of the news brand. A shabby, unfocused, mistaken, strewn site will reflect badly on the news organization. Unfinished business. Like all 24 hours news products, online journalism has no beginning and no end. Newspapers and magazines have editions. Traditional radio and TV stations have news bulletins and news programs. But 24 hour news operations, be they on air or online, just keep rolling along. The duty editor inherits a product and herein lies one of the first dangers. Unless the duty editor is absolutely clear about his or her motives, a massive damage can be done to the news brands at this stage. The duty editor's role is to deliver content to the user in most efficient, effective and elegant manner. They are not there to play with content. Their role is not to change things for changing sake. They are there to present the news properly. The users should never notice there has been a change to shift. The user should only feel better informed as the day goes on. Morning news meeting. Most news websites hold a morning news meeting when the prospects for the day are discussed. If the website is part of a larger news operation, the stories being covered for other outlets will be considered. The morning news meeting is of crucial importance. This is where the duty editor takes control of events, organizes his or her resources, sets out what is required, gives a clear outline of what the site is going to look like as the day progresses and listen to his or her team members. Windows on the newsroom. The ideal website should be of a window on the newsroom. Its main aim should be to reflect only those stories that are being covered by the news operation across all outlets. If the role is to add value to those issues by exploiting all the techniques the online news environment offers. If the editor-in-chief of news operation is out of the country, she or he must be able to log on to your site and have a good idea about what are the 10 news stories being covered across all outlets and when they are likely to appear on air, online or in print. Converged news content. The news, the duty editors will also ensure that all the material that appears on the site will cross promote other areas of the news operations output. It is also important that the user reads the same facts online as they hear on air or read in print. They must not be giving mixed messages, ligering with the other departments. It is important that the duty editor has a system for letting other department know which stories the online team is investing time and resources in covering. The chances for cross-promotion on air, on screen and in print 
will be far greater if the person in charge of the editorial content on the website lets the editor of other news outlets know what the online team is creating. As you inform these outlets, be ready to consider their suggestions. The other editors might have excellent ideas about what should be created online. Have an open mind. Be prepared to try new ideas if they are aimed at enhancing the user's experience. The basic news agenda must include all the main stories being covered by rest of the news operations. Exploit all existing resources being committed to covering the story. Maximizing existing efforts already allocated to cover a story. Reflect the strength of your organization's news gathering effort. The basic news agenda is not a chance for the incoming duty editor to look good, an opportunity to play with news to appear clever, a display of online interactive gimmicks. A news product is isolated from the rest of the news operation. An exercise in one upmanship with the previous duty editor, a game or a bit of fun. Using stories in multiple indices. Each news story sits in one area of the site. The story might belong to the technology section, the politics section, a world regional section or some other area of the site. Wherever it is, this is its home. Every story needs a home. On the skills of news websites, management knows how to use each story on all relevant section so that it appears on multiple section indices. The role of the duty editor is to maximize the impact of each story, exploit all the content to the full and offer the user the fullest experience online. Deconstructing stories. One of the art of running is that a news website knows when to break a story into component parts. There will always need to be the one overview piece that weaves all the elements together. But the art of knowing when to break a story down into compartment, component parts, deconstructing a story is one of the duties editor's key skills. Next is special sections. The duty editor might decide that an issue is of such significance and is likely to be around for so long that he or she decides there is a need for special section. Try to think of these as a menu to, to a rich feast. The special section has special groupings. These are usually news, full coverage, guide, fact files, timelines, profiles question and answer the main questions being asked along with the answers and interactivity audio video graphics and interactive features such as maps and models data husbandry special sections can be of immense benefits to users of content and producers alike because they group all news items background information and context and analysis pieces in one place. The information is easy to find, easy to navigate and easy to use. However, they can also be risky. If you commission too many special sections, there is a real danger that you might not be able to maintain them properly and they could soon become out of date. This is particularly true with political specials. Have you remembered to update every politician detail who has resigned, moved on to another department or died? Legal issues, jigsaw effect. Be extremely careful when covering legal cases where somebody has been arrested, faced charges or is appearing in court. There will be a good chance that somewhere on your news site you have covered the original incident, perhaps in some detail. The story containing the background to the case might have been archived, but it will be still accessible through a word search. The user might also piece together the details and look up the cases 
your site will probably have material stored somewhere that could possibly influence a jury and perhaps lead to a contempt of court managing the front page knowing your audience and what the site site statistics say about the users visiting habits will help inform your decisions about when to update and when not to update for example the peak viewing periods are 11:30 to 4 that is 11:30 to 2 and 6 to 8 you might want to aim for a major update of the site for 11 to 5 you might want to make smaller changes between those times but it is worth focusing your efforts on the time when you have the biggest audience you certainly should not work on a major update of the site when all the users have logged off however at the same time you cannot and should not hold back the flow of news breaking news and updates will happen 24 hours a day 7 days a week knowing your audiences viewing habits can help you decide where best to focus your editorial efforts story shelf life consider how much a story costs in terms of time effort and resources before deciding to relegate it to a headline link into the other news section your job is to manage the content intelligently both in terms of its editorial impact and also in terms of its cost and benefits to your news organization often investing time and effort looking into the issues surrounding a new story is of more long term value than spending too much time on the story itself new stickers many sites have a new sticker along the top of the page the site's top 5 or 6 new stories sometimes travel across the top of the page new stories are often clickable meaning that if you have to click on them you go through the story itself tickers can be used to list the top stories of the day they can also be used to display stories from a variety of sections the ticker can also be used to flag up minor breaking news stories breaking news many sites have a function that allows the duty editor to put up a breaking news banner this can often take the form of small box across the top of the page it will be used in major breaking news situations its presence tell the audience that something big has happened the duty editor needs to use the breaking news box with care it should not be overused it makes a significant editorial statement it says stop what you are doing you need to do, read this now special front page there will be news stories that deserve a special front page This is when the unusual news is taken over by something so major and so important that no other stories deserve to make it through to the front page. Special front pages might only contain one image, one headline and one summary. Linking to one story, it also sets out clearly that this is the most important single news event happening at this time. and the last is exploiting the content the duty editor should be fully aware of all the content that is either already gathered currently being created or in the process of being commissioned their role is to bring all this together for the benefit of the user i hope at the end of the video you are much clear about of the do's and don'ts of web writing and what should be taken care or what should be kept in mind while writing for web thank you so much for watching this video